have in terms of uh, in terms of breadth of search. They don't have the same thing as Synaptic. Uh, so very often I find myself having to use the GDK based uh, Synaptic and KDE to find the packages that I need. Things like Zlib and uh, all kinds of packages for developments. And uh, <clears throat> so so I, I don't really know. I, I suppose Canonical know what it's doing and it's going to. I, 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 I'm not sure I agree with that. Canonical's making a lot of unilateral decisions like this as of lately that are uh, having some adverse effects. Uh, 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 I have real reservations about a lot of this this unilateral, it's going to work this way that Canonical is going to do. Yeah, they, they had a Yahoo thing, uh, Yahoo Toolbar, uh, I think around 2000 and like maybe late 2009 or just feels like it. Uh, actually, the person announcing that was the uh, one of the managers there in Canonical over the desktop, and he used to work for Microsoft, which in itself is an interesting topic. But uh, the they they proposed just well, you know, <laughs> we just put a front end to uh, to Microsoft Bing by default in Fire in, in Firefox, which has a deal with Google for Firefox to be paid by Google, uh, which was really making people furious. At least uh, I was one of those who were writing politely about whether they shouldn't do that because they're helping Microsoft by doing so. And eventually they changed their minds and they canceled, they called the whole thing off and they went back to Google and it hasn't been brought up since and there was the well, thing the same thing with Chrome. Here, here's, what, here's the honest feeling I get out of Canonical. This is the way I've, I'm seeing Canonical more and more as they do things like this. They're like the Zucker Pope. You know, when, when Facebook crosses that imaginary line, the Zucker Pope goes, Oh, I didn't mean to. Uh, I, I swear, it's just an honest mistake. Yeah. So I won't do it now, since everybody's mad. And, and more and more, that's like what I'm hearing about Canonical. It's like, we want to push it over here, whether you want it or not. But if you throw enough of a hissy, we'll back off just enough to calm you down. Yeah, I, I try to defend them as much as I can because I think it would be a shame if they were, if if their brand value was devalued in some sense. Uh, if you see what I mean, though, uh, lots of people will think, "Oh, uh, what's this Linux? Oh, Ubuntu. Oh, I heard it's not doing well. Therefore, well, Linux and see, is that, that's one of the thing. reasons I'm not so sure. Canonical being put under the spotlight and maybe the brand being devalued isn't necessarily a bad thing because this the scenario right now is Linux is being judged by Canonical yeah. and Linux in some ways is capable of so much more than Canonical is doing mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not sure it's fair to Linux and open source in general to be judging uh, what Linux is capable of by what Canonical's choosing to do yeah a lot of people view it as Ubuntu OS uh, as Ubuntu, the third operating system, they don't actually think of it as Linux in the same way that so people don't think of Linux as a contender in phones. They just think, oh, it's Android equals Google equals whatever equals uh, uh, not even open source, but just that that the whatever application store Google's got uh, and how many applications they have. That's how they judge the platforms, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a bit of a shame of how they people simplify things. Um, one thing I was going to say though is with Canonical, you know, the, the ranks in terms of, uh, if you judge it by the distro world, well, distro world is a funny thing because it has those different scales of how much of a time span you're looking at. Uh, and, and it very much depends then on releases of new distros, which most people will have an interest in because they have contained the latest versions of everything. So lots of people look at Fedora still. Uh, but if you look at the past month, I believe, in terms of scale, you find Ubuntu number three, which is very atypical because they always were number one since around 2007, maybe 2008. But uh, and and it does show, no matter how you put it, the fact is that they are perceived as kind of canonical equals Ubuntu equals canonical, so they make the decisions. Uh, and I. So I, I did a small survey I kind of wrote about. Uh, I looked at the news volume that I have in my uh, Thunderbird folders uh, from the same period last year, and news volumes for searches on Ubuntu. Uh, and it was about 50-40% higher a week ago, uh, sorry, a year ago, 
and that's kind of a semi-scientific way of judging how much uh, how much interest and how much coverage in the press uh, Ubuntu is managing to to get. Uh, and in equivalent time periods, I was looking at the month of uh, of June, uh, same number of days now and about a year ago. Uh, so it, it does seem like lots of people look at things like Android and maybe look at things like Linux a bit differently and not paying as much attention to it. Uh, you see, I, I would be a bit uh, a bit dubious of any of these distro watch stats. Not because there's anything wrong with the distro watch sites, but I think it just shows clicks uh, on the uh, on the relevant sections. And therefore, if you get a new release of a distro, you'll see that the distro itself will push up the charts of the um, on distro watch. Yeah. And and maybe well, let's see. Depends uh, on the scale. Here's the thing. I, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that because. Then how do distros like PC Lin, which are rolling distros, stay in the top ten? Maybe through word of mouth and other people clicking on them. I mean, I'll give an example. In my case, I click on the OpenSUSE um, section and read that quite a lot, just to see if there's any updates, if there's been any new reviews, which will uh, obviously add to the statistics. Yes, I've got no intention of putting that on my computer. I, I, I would very much doubt, in my opinion, that the distro watch rankings have any bearing. A lot of people know what Ubuntu is, they don't have to check that. So, and also, and one it, of the things, yeah. And sorry, if I could just say as well, you know, most people, if they have a distro on their machine, um, or a lot of people I've known, will have in their browser the link to the homepage of that aforementioned distro, whichever it is. Therefore, you wouldn't need to necessarily click on the distro that, um, that you've, you know, that, that you've got installed already well, on. Or conversely, if you're a lean spire, you would basically gain the numbers. One of the things they did is they tried to drive traffic by default <laughs> and distro to distro watch to push up the numbers. And I, I think they got sort of like told off or penalized or removed. I'm not sure what know, happened. Does lean spire even still exist? That thing I, hasn't was bought by, uh, It was bought by Zandros, which hasn't released any release of of Xandros Linux since I think 2007 or maybe yeah, 2006. I mean, uh, yeah, I remember when Xandros bought them, but like they never released any updates. The whole project is kind of that they're still trying to sell it, and like you say, it's it's uh, old. Uh, you go to the side of Xandros, and I'll I'll show you one of the pages where do you know what they sell? They sell you for fifty dollars uh, an assurance for Microsoft for patents. If you if you buy Zandros, you can pay a, an extra fifty dollars. This is the only place where I found actual evidence of the cost of the of the patent uh, fees or patent protection for Microsoft. Uh, that's not sure it still exists, but we do know that they the fifty dollars is what they value to be the you know if you if you're buying if you're deploying a company something like. A desktop Linux distribution that's based on Debian. It treats Debian in a new dress. Uh, Microsoft wants fifty dollars out of that. I, I believe the number for Android uh, based on HTC, something like five dollars, based on some banker who said something about it, which I don't know if it's accurate. No, and, and I have a real problem with that. Uh, we need to get these cases pushed fully through the court. I realize it's cheaper to settle this rather than prove that the patents are bullcrap but the un, i mean but at the end of the day there that's just creating this whole misnomer and it, it's and it's it's, it's also a shame a little bit of, I, it's, I, it's a it's a shame and you now have suits going on like google is having to go through the appellate courts to overturn something that never should have been uh, done in the first place because of the precedence that settling all these things are setting. Yeah, and Google I think knocked down everything of the 21 patents except five so far from the Oracle case. Uh, so there is progress in the right direction. So they they kind of seem to be getting past Oracle's patents now and proving they shouldn't have been granted or they aren't valid in applying to Google's uh, to Google's Android. Uh, apparently, Oracle, if the rumors are true, and at least what they say in the courtroom, which of course is an exaggeration, you usually claim more than you think you deserve. So they say, I think, 6.1 billion, which, you know, they, that's what Oracle wants from Google, which is about the same price they pay for a son. Uh, completely ridiculous, of course. Well, before we get too far off the subject of Canonical, um, I'm going to hijack both of you two now and introduce <laughs> the next song. Um, which is quite relevant to the subject of Canonical, because this is a track by uh, John O'Bacon, who uh, 
graciously came on the show a few uh, a few months back for an interview. Now, I'm sure everybody remembers the free software song that was uh, written by Richard Stallman uh, quite a few years ago, and uh, John O'Bacon's uh, made a heavy metal version of it. Now, since I don't 